41 out of 60, Rex. Yeah. F 403 yards. Don't you dare blame Dak Prescott for this game. What do you Brady. mean? No, the defense stunk. I don't care. How Dak Prescott, I, and I get it. Dak only threw for 403 yards, rushed for 45 yards. It's Dak Prescott's fault. The hell it is. This defense stunk. And, and that's, that's you want to, why'd they lose? Why'd they look like crap? Why'd they get out, coach? I don't know. But point to the defense, period. It, period. It Brady. was excruciating to watch. We will work our way to the offense. Danny, I know you are, are, are itching to dive into the way the quarterback did or did not play. But Rex insisted in our meeting this morning, no matter how hard I tried to talk him out of it, okay. that we start with the defense. Dan. It was excruciating to watch. I mean, those of us who wanted to see the Cowboys make a deep run, they gave up, they gave up the run on the very first play of the game, and they never stopped it the entire day. What happened to the Cowboys defense yesterday, Dan Orlovsky? Exactly what we talked about on Monday, Greeny. On Monday morning, we came in of last week and said, listen, this is a bad matchup for Dallas. Green Bay is going to put Jordan Love under center. Green Bay is going to use a ton of pre-snap motion. Green Bay is going to use a ton of play-action pass. And the Cowboys defense has struggled with all that. And for some reason, no one wanted to listen to that. Early on, you saw the under center, 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends. They kept play faking at Micah Parsons to make sure that they could protect the backside while also making sure that they helped that front side tackle. And then what they did was they attacked the man coverage. They would fake running to one side and run back across from where they came from. Jordan Love had great pockets all afternoon. This allowed him to play very comfortable. They quick snapped the Cowboys defense on multiple times. This is a perfect example of it. Micah Parsons wins. This is why they kept faking at Micah to essentially create that double team and Dobbs is going to fake like he's going to start at the bottom of the screen, go to the top of the screen, and then run back out. The motion confused coverage multiple times. Jordan Love was able to get the ball out on time. And in the run game, you're going to hear this all day. Split flow. Ryan Clark did a tape on it last week. They run zone one way, so everyone blocks one way, and then they take a guy from that area, and then they bring him across. The motion clears the underneath. Or the second level, they cut the backside. They did this to Micah Parsons six times in the game. Clearly had a plan for him. This was Greeny. Let's let's not make any mistake about this. Matt LaFleur in Green Bay ran circles around Dallas and Dan Quinn. And Dan Quinn's a great coach. Ran circles around them. Okay? So this was an unbelievable plan. Not surprising. If you had listened all season, we talked about this Dallas defense struggles with motion and with play action. That's why it was a bad matchup, and they got embarrassed. And more importantly, though, I think they struggle versus uh, teams that are committed to running the football. Yeah. And, and to me, they got destroyed on first down. They gave up nine and a half yards on first down. Like, it's crazy. The first drive of the game, this is fantastic. You only have eight rush attempts, by the way, in this first drive. Right. They did everything they wanted. Why, when you run the football, is, is uh, the play action so deadly? Because everybody, oh, I better play the run. Now they're throwing the ball behind the thing. And the other thing, too, is why is it important? When you run the football, look at the protection on some of the – here's a little screen pass here. But – when you run the football and you run play action, it helps your protection. Yeah, that's and that's protection. where Green Bay was a protection first team. They absolutely destroyed them. They absolutely outcoached Dan Quinn. By the way, why in the hell, uh -oh. out of 54 snaps, offensive snaps, yeah. are you playing six-plus DBs on 48 of them when a team's running the ball down your throat? Say that again. They had 54 offensive snaps. They had six defensive backs on the field for 48 of the 54. Six plus yeah. for 48 of the 54 snaps. You don't do that when you're getting your brains kicked in. Yeah. All right, running the football. How about we put bigger personnel on the field? How about we try to uh, run blitz? Anything besides just taking an ass kicking. Th th that's exactly. So this morning, I wish you all could have been in our meeting this morning. Rex was so frustrated. Oh. Oh, yeah. With their lack of adjustment, oh. that he was actually drawing up stuff, yeah. plays for me. I have it might as well have been drawings from the wall of a cave. I have no idea what it was. At one point, I had to ask him which side was the offense and which side was the defense. But but the point is, Nick, that even I, yeah. am, as a fan, I'm sitting there going, do something, adjust in some way, because they were just getting it shoved down. 
their throat the entire game. I think Dan nailed it with uh, the Packers having a great plan. It seemed they seemed committed to avoid third down at all costs. They did not want to get in because that's Correct. when you have Micah Parsons on the loose. You saw them on that first drive. The running games were were the running game was working, but the play action. I think even though they didn't do it much that first drive, that was really the killer right there. They would take those big shots on second down because they did not want to get in third and long, and it was effective. They max proed once, and then the second time they left Zach Tom manned up against Micah Parsons with the play action to him, and he held up in that situation. Those are the, t the plays and opportunities where you have to make a play. Someone has to make a play. Well, that number on your screen, they average not, you just said it, yeah. but when you look at it, you go back and through history of, of pro, pro football. Any team that averages nine and a half yards per play on first down, find me how many games they've lost. Uh, yeah, how about uh, yeah. every single one of them? Right, that's what I mean. But, I mean, it's crazy. But you know what's funny? Why yeah. is it important, like, on, uh, you know, here they, they isolate one-on-one, -on -one, Micah mm -hmm. Parsons. Oh, he doesn't get to the quarter. Yeah, because he's playing the run first. Yeah. He's got to convert to pass rush, and that's another reason. He's not just and, going and like this. He made a couple tackles on those runs when they did run it away from him, but he was making it three and four yards down the field, and their expected yards per carry was about 4.3, which means that that offensive line was pushing them back. They were expected to get four yards. Anything on top of that was icing. That old line was playing well, and it was not just because they were bigger and more physical. It was also scheme that Dan pointed out with the split zone. All right, so... We've got that on the table 10 minutes in. Whew. And Rex, you were right. The Cowboys' defense was atrocious. atrocious. There may have been almost nothing their offense could have done to win the game because their defense was so overmatched. <laughs> How would you assess the performance of the Cowboys' quarterback yesterday? You know, it was worst of the season, and it came at the worst time. I thought he looked panicked. I thought he looked flustered. I thought he looked worried, uh, made kind of uncharacteristic decisions, at least of this year. Green, he looked like Dak of last year. Those two interceptions, I know Jair's is, is a great play. It's inexcusable. It's man-to-man -man coverage. The motion comes down. They're playing in and out. Jair's going to take the guy going out. This is third and four. Dak, he's not open. CeeDee Lamb is going to come wide open on the corner route. That's your guy. He's playing against a second or third cover, man. But you force it to... Brandon Cooks and or Jair Alexander, that's an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic decision from this year. Now we're going to get that zone pressure Dom mentioned. It's three deep, three underneath. The motion happens. No one goes with him. Dak, we're playing zone coverage. It's triple slants. You have to read this inside out. Number three to number two to number one. Brandon Cooks is uncovered. It's zone. You never throw to the inside guy in zone. He literally threw that interception last year. The same interception last year. And so while Jair's play is a great play, it's a poor decision. It's the wrong decision. You're throwing a covered route to the number one corner to your number two or number three wide receiver when your guy is wide open. So flustered, panicked, hurried, rushed, Whatever adjective you want to describe, it was the worst performance this year for Dak Prescott. It was completely opposite of every way he had played up until that point since the San Francisco game. And it has to make you pause with decision making for his future in Dallas. Oh, I, <laughs> I, am, I, I, I couldn't disagree more with, with Dan on the fact this guy is the future of this team. You, you're not going to let Dak Prescott who basically played at an MVP level this year, and, and we're not going to bring him back. Right. I think that's absurd. I mean, now, look, Dan, I got to say something on, on that. The, the Jair Alexander interception. Double, Lamb was doubled. That, that to me, the ball is going to go there. The, the man worked open. This is one of the greatest interceptions I've ever seen. And to me, look, watch him beat him to the spot. He ends up playing Lamb's over the top doubled. of him and beating him to the spot. I don't blame Dak for throwing that. This is just an unbelievable. Look how he gets the arm over and getting in position. This is as good a technique as, as I've ever seen against this type of uh, route. And so to me, I don't blame Dak on this one. Now, the second one, oh, we can definitely coverage. make an argument on that. OK, yeah, it shouldn't go there. And I get it. But what happens is his eyes are inside. And as soon as they come off, the kid breaks, breaks out and he makes a play. Uh, Savage does. Yeah. And it, it makes that's a huge mistake. There's no doubt about it. All right, it's but to me, three. overall performance, 
I would say, oh, hell oh, no. God. And and yes, are you oh, pressing? No, no, no. You are. Oh, hell no what? You thought oh, that? hell no, it's not on Dak Prescott. So, so you're saying, I, I will go so far as to say, I'll go with you if you want to say the defense was the reason that they had no chance. They you're no not going to tell me Dak Prescott played well yesterday. I'm not going to say he played well. horribly yesterday. No, he, when the game was a game, he was terrible yesterday. Well, I'm going to say this. He played like a superstar compared to that defense. He did not play well. Okay, I get it. Oh He's gosh, played dude. much better. Rex. But I'm telling you, that defense, I don't care if Joe Montana's at quarterback, nobody had a chance back. Dan, Rex. go. Rex, Rex, we're not disputing. The defense, everyone was awful. The coaching was awful. The defense was awful. Dak was awful. Do CeeDee Lamb was not doubled on that play. It was press four. He's breaking yeah. out on a corner route. You, the, the, Jair Alexander has got that play covered. So don't throw him the football. That's the wrong decision. The interception, the second interception for a pick six, it's three deep, three underneath. The, it, the, the guy's staring right at that the quarterback. Like, there's no way that we could sit yeah, here and I, say no, that but, that but is we're, a, the good okay, decision I gotta say or this. the right I think decision. It's, I think it's, it's probably wrong. a waste of. I think it's probably a waste of time. I disagree with you on the the Zaire, the Jair Alexander interception. I completely agree with you on the second interception. <laughs> but I think it's probably a waste of time to argue these individual plays. Dak was not good in this game, but the bigger picture is Dak over the course of his career. And in these big games, it's hard to argue that he has not been able to, it's hard to argue that he's been able to lift okay. his team. So you're expecting him in this moment to keep them in the game. As bad as the defense was, with a quarterback like Dak, who's been as good as he has all season, like, we need you, we need this offense to keep them in the game, and he was unable to do that. What we need to do is actually have a defense show up in the playoffs. Yeah. That's the Agreed. issue. The last three losses, all right, San Francisco twice, Green Bay and things like that. They've allowed teams I, – I, Himbo gave me a stat. It's like 103 rush attempts to 70 pass attempts. That's what you're giving up. You're getting your brains kicked in because you're not built Rex. to win in December and January when the snow flies because your team's not physical. I understand that. But this was the first time in the, of the three games you're talking about where they gave up a ton of points. Look, I'm not a body language expert or whatever, but when Dak – when they first showed him running out on the field, I thought, he looks tight. He, and maybe it's because Green Bay had just gone right down the field and scored on him, and it, it, he had a bad feeling one way or another, Dan. I am totally on your side. I thought when the game was a game, Dak Prescott yesterday, and I love him. I thought Dak was terrible. It, it was his worst game of the year, Greeny. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is against the defense in Green Bay that about yeah, four or five weeks part. ago, in consecutive weeks, had Bryce Young and Tommy DeVito as the NFC Players of the Week. This is a Green Bay defense that everyone made fun of. This is a Green Bay defense that unequivocally people thought that this Dallas Cowboys offense would go up and down the field against. There, there was never a moment where you said, oh my gosh, great play by Dak. They, they totally controlled this football game. And Rex, in the last three playoff losses, he's got five interceptions. He's got 10 sacks. No one is debating if he's a good player. Dak is a good player. He has been a good player his whole career. Dak had a great season. But once again, when, it, when they needed him to be the difference maker, he went against the kid who's playing in his first career playoff game on the road, and it wasn't even close. And here's the last point. And Dom, Rex, Greeny, you guys can't argue with this one. In his career, in the playoffs, from when he started to where he is now, the performances have gotten worse. Outside of the Tampa Bay game, when they stunk last year. Yeah. When he was younger yeah, well, in the playoffs, he played solid. He played good. They've gotten progressively worse. No I, argument. I, yeah. I, I've got, I have to say this. Go. Like, this one here, this was, I mean, their defense got destroyed. Yeah. And now we're going to put it on Dak, who's, yes, is he pressing some? Of course, you're down no, by how many points? Him, now, I get it. The, 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 the touchdown... Uh, the pick six was absolutely yeah. an atrocious uh, throw. But no way in hell am I putting this thing on Dak Prescott. I I'll tell I you this. I would have loved to have that dude as my quarterback. I can guarantee you that. And, I, and the I, thing that gets me, like, no, I'm not letting this thing go. Go. Because this guy, and look, by the way, Dano, you forgot Baker Mayfield had a perfect uh, QBR against yeah. that horrible defense of Green Bay also. <laughs> so I get it. Yeah. But we, yeah. I expected I expected <laughs> Dallas would – they would go up. I was one of those guys who thought they would go up and down the field against this defense. I really did. But – and yes, 
I see what you're saying. Grinny, you, your point about Dak, his body language at the game. I thought the entire football team looked shocked, mm -hmm. shocked on that first drive. When Green Bay, the nerve of Green Bay, yeah. to sit back and say, we're going to take the ball. Yeah. Nobody takes the ball. All right? Why do you want those back-to-back -back possessions in the second half? Right? Right. All right. They take it and go 75 yards. You don't have an answer. And it's like, oh, did this just happen? And when you hear the comments, Greeny, from Jerry Jones, when you hear the comments from Dak, you hear them from everybody. McCarthy. They just assumed that they were the mighty Cowboys and they could lay their jocks on the field and win. Never happened. Which brings us, I have to pause here, but only briefly. And we've got nothing but time to dive into all of this. Dan, you can see he has a lot more to say, and he will. And D. Wood is going to join us and everything else. Because we haven't even gotten to what I think was the most important part of the game, although Dan touched on it. The Cowboys were outcoached every yeah. conceivable way.